we've imagined that if we practice more lovingness, we imagine if we find a way to end our suffering, we imagine if we find a way to not think that that will wake us up, when in fact those things are consequences and results of, side effects of waking up. You wake up and those things happen. Doing those things prior to having a wake-up call are fine things to do. There's nothing wrong with it. Do whatever you can do here in this world to end your suffering, to feel better, to steal your mind, to, f to feel more happiness. There's absolutely nothing incorrect about that. Just remember that what you're doing is working really hard to do something when waking up allows that to just appear spontaneously because that is your more natural self. In fact, that's the only self that you have, which leads us to the next idea, the next truth that is not a truth, and that is that you do not have a personal self. Your body has a certain name that's been attached to it since shortly after your birth, and uh, you have had a sense of, I am a me, I am, I am Mary, I am Tom, I am Juliet, I am Roger, but you're not. As long as you believe that you are a personal separate entity inside a personal separate body, then none of this makes sense. And that's one of the reasons why it's so darn difficult to talk about this. Every time that a concept arises about this or an idea that could be absolutely loaded with things that are worthy of your pondering, it's then related to the I thought. I can wake up. I can be free of thinking. I can have bliss. And the I is seen as the entity that lives inside the body, and there isn't one. There's not a single human body on this planet that has an I entity in it that is a legitimate, separate, discrete entity with its own volition. They do not exist. This is probably the largest um, stumbling block for people because you have spent every moment of your life from about the age of three forward believing with all your ability that not only are you a separate entity but everyone around you is a separate entity and with that as the foundational thought is it any wonder that there has been nothing but strife and turmoil century after century until it's seen that there is no separation each body is programmed and conditioned to protect itself each eye thinks that it must get what it wants in order for it to be happy if that disappears and you see there's no I that has needs to be met then immediately what drops off is all the competition all the resentment all the anger those feelings can still come up but they are seen for what they are thoughts that just flow through the mind and you don't have to pay attention to them if the idea intrigues you and you want to explore it further, what could you do to find out for yourself? Because remember, you're not gonna believe anything up front. You're gonna, you're gonna look at things with openness, not skepticism and not belief. So if, you're, if there's a little bit of an intrigue or a little bit of, hmm, I'd like to explore that. How could it be explored that there's no personal I, no, no little entity in here? I saw it as a, I saw it as a little, <laughs> a little entity. That's what I saw in terms of my thoughts about it. I thought, well, sure, there's an eye in here. Of course, there's an eye in here. Why? It's a little, it's a little entity thing. I, I had never examined that thought in my entire life 
I had seen that thought n numerous times, never examined it. I just assumed it was correct. That's our conditioning and operation. Everybody thinks that. Everybody assumes that thoughts are correct. Most of the time we allow thought to just simply go through our heads and the ones that pop up that say, give me attention, we give it attention. We, but we don't give it critical attention. We don't examine it for truth and untruth, our own version of that. We simply accept it. When we are born, we do not have a sense of I, a sense of me as discreet and separate from our parents and our family and the people that are around us. We don't even have a sense of discreteness or separateness from our cribs, our clothing, our toys, the food that we eat. It's all one thing because back then we are still in consciousness. We are the consciousness as itself. And the only thing that's happening is experiencing. There is no object of which we are the subject, the baby, the subject. There is no subject, I, uh, I the baby, looking at objects. There is only the baby and everything else is one thing. And it's not even a thing. In reality, it is only consciousness that pops out and appears as this thing here, this movie. There is no observer of this movie. Not when you're a baby and not in this moment right now. There is no one watching this movie. The only thing that's happening is the movie. And the way that it's happening for each of us is what we call experiencing. How do you know you're here right this moment? You're experiencing. Maybe you're experiencing sitting on a hard chair and your bottom feels the hardness. Maybe you're experiencing on a soft thing and you're going, that's cozy. Maybe you're experiencing thoughts go through your head while you hear this voice. That's experiencing. What is happening is only experiencing. There is not anything separate from you. There is only the experiencing. There is no subject looking at and experiencing any object anywhere. This is a tricky, tricky thing. And saying these words is a tricky, tricky thing because it comes out as a concept and no concept is true but it's the closest stuff we have. Words are the barrier and words are the bridge. So here you are imagining, wow, what would it be like to have no personal self? What would it be like to know that there wasn't a me here? And if that's true, how could I possibly experience that and have that be my experiencing? As with anything, as with everything, you serve yourself when you look at it closely. You serve yourself by looking. In the looking, it's entirely possible that you can see. So look. Look. Look around inside of your so-called self, inside of your so-called psyche, even inside of your so-called body. Look for the I, the little guy, the little entity. The one that you think is steering the vehicle. The one that you think is making decisions. The one that you think has control or not. The one that you think has a volition and a will. The one that you think that speaks when your tongue and your lips move. The one that you think is thinking. Look for that. Look everywhere. Keep going. There's really not much more to do than that. Look, look, and look again. <laughs>